What the hell? Did they get my boy Gronk a TV show? What the hell are you guys thinking? Man, this is unbelievable. I love you, man. Good luck with everything. Wishing you the best, your boy Poppy here. You know, man, God bless you and keep on rolling, big dog. Peace. the suit? Yeah. Good, good, because it's the first time I've worn a shirt in three months. Yeah. Yes. Seriously, first time I won the Super Bowl, no shirt. So why not trick everyone like I played in the Super Bowl again this year? So no shirt again. You know, I haven't worn clothes since we won the Super Bowl, just to make sure everyone thinks I played. But I'm telling you, you win the Super Bowl and the party doesn't stop. Yes, it doesn't stop. It keeps on going and going and going. Every bar I go into, people want to buy you drinks. Yo, Gronk, let me buy you a drink. Yo, let me get you a beer. Yo, let me get you a shot. Hey, man, how about you give me a motherfucking IV doctor? I got a season next year. Damn. We won the Super Bowl, but I lost my damn liver from you guys. All your guys' fault that buy me shots out there. Damn. You know, if you guys want to buy me another shot, it needs to be a B12, lemon ginger, or a flu shot, please. Ooh. That will be great. All right, all right. Calm down, everyone. I don't party that hard. But let me tell you, when I do party, you can't handle that shit. No one can handle that shit. No one. Trust me, I'm all pro in football and I'm all pro in going ham! Yeah, baby! I'll catch a bullet from Brady in the end zone and I'll catch a smoking hot model right off the DJ booth, baby. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, it's getting hot up here. Damn, ladies. Should I take it off? Ooh. Man, I'm sweating for real now. Oh, ladies, don't you wish you could? Put your hand through my hair and just not care. Yeah, you know. You know, people offer you everything when you win, and the Pats fans are the craziest. You know? 
the craziest. I don't get the usual, hey, Gron, can we take a picture? Hey, can we take a selfie? Can I get an autograph, please? Nah, I get shit like, hey, Gron, can you fuck my wife? And get her pregnant? I'm like, why? So we can be best buddies forever, man, please, please? I'm like, nah, dude. He's like, okay, can you just sign her titties, please, Rob, please? I'm like, nah, man, these requests are ridiculous. I stopped going out on those streets. That's crazy. <laughs> these streets are bad. Titties everywhere. People offering me crazy shit. Oh, man. You know, I had another crazy request one time. Hey, Gronk, you know, I know you don't know me that well, but can you please bring me to Tom's mansion? I'm like, shit, I haven't even been there. It's been seven years since I've known that guy. Seven years. Without me, he would have zero Super Bowl rings. I don't know how that's possible. I didn't know him after his first three, but he would have zero. Yo, Tom, where the fuck do you live anyways? I'm coming over, man. I'm coming over. Yo, yo Tom, I need some avocado ice cream too, please. Some walnuts, a side salad. Thank you, Tom. Maybe I can play till I'm 40 like you. Oh, man. You know, back in the old days, my teammates and I, we used to go out and party hard. And I mean hard. Shots everywhere, bottles everywhere. You know, my married teammates, though, they always wanted to hang, and they just can't. They're not cool anymore in the club. I'm throwing my hands in the air, and they're throwing earplugs in their ears. I'm like, shit. Yeah, you know. I get it, but it's not for everyone. They're always embarrassing me. I'm like, yo, come on, let's go. I've developed some nightclub skills that you guys just can't handle. I can hold a drink on the crowded dance floor. I can request a song. I can take my shirt off. And guess what? I won't even spill a single drop. Yes. This shit ain't easy up here. It's my first time. But it ain't my first time taking my clothes off. Just kidding. Oh, uh, just kidding again. All right, there we go. We, I got to take off. I'm getting sweaty. Hold on. Wow. Now I understand how you chicks feel when you see me all sweaty and wet. I just came up with that one. <laughs> so you can put it that way, you know? All right, my football skills, they come in handy in my life, you know? I have to bring my football skills into the club once in a while. I see an X coming at me, I'm running a post pattern right into that lift. I'm out of here. Oh, here comes Miss Wasted Loudmouth. Oh, Rob, suck my titties, suck my titties. I'm your biggest fan. You know something, time to call that audible and get the fuck out of here and leave. Damn. Oh, shit, there's a chick that already banged my teammate and has a kid with him. Oh, time to run that option and get him the fuck out. <laughs> option. I should play quarterback and run that option, baby. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ladies, I'm looking pretty jacked right now, you wanna see? Hey, what can I say? I'm on Tom Brady's workout plan now. <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right. So I'm still in the club. You know, I gotta run some patterns and shit, and then all of a sudden I see big booty ho, big booty ho, Sharika. I'm like, damn, that booty's huge. And she's coming at me, shaking it. She's like, oh, Rob, I just wanna be gronked. I'm like, oh, damn. This booty was so big, I had to run a fly pattern right to my house. That's why I'm so good at football. I use my skills at all times. In the club, off the field, in my house, it don't matter. Everyone thinks, oh, he's, part oh, he's partying, he's partying. More like I'm running routes in the club to get away from all these bitches. <laughs> you know, I usually run, and then I let my brother come in. He looks like me, and then, you know, oh, Gronk, let me take you home. He takes them all home. I'm like, yo, bro, how'd you do? He goes, thanks so much, dude. It's so cool being in Boston. I love being your brother. 
Oh, there he is. Hey, bro. Hi. Yep, ladies, that's him. You want to take him home? Too bad. All right. So you meet these hot chicks all the time, but the other side of the story is when you meet that girl that ain't so cute, and they ask for everything. Can you buy me a purse? Can you buy me a plane ticket? Yo, Grant, can you bring me to Italy, please? I want to see that Eiffel Tower you're always talking about. <laughs> Even though that's in France. I'm like, I'm like, no, shit, girl, how about I bring you to the mall and get you that new perfume, Extortion by L'Oreal? <laughs> Guys, it's true. It's out there, guys. It's out there. All right, I'm in no rush to get married and have kids, all because I'm trying to bang more than once a month. I talk to all my teammates. Yo, Gronk, man, did you get laid this week? Because like, my wife won't even bang me. I'm like, dude, you just scored four touchdowns. I know, I had to jack off still. <laughs> I'm like, Ninkovich, you had five sacks, two interceptions, a fumble recovery to the touchdown, and we won the game because of that fumble recovery. He's like, I know, but I had to jack off to Red Tube tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I love making fun of Ninko. You want to know why? Because he's my Ninko bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I love that guy so much. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for having me up here. We'll bring out the real comedians now. We'll have a blast with them. We're a lot funnier. Here we go. All right, all right. Give it up for our first real comedian of the night, Justin McKinney, everyone. Rob Gronkowski, everybody. How great is Rob Gronkowski? Wow, this is, uh, this is great. We've been working with Gronk all day. Such a great guy. And when I told my kids, my second and fourth grader, that I was working with Gronk, they could not believe it. They love Gronk. In fact, my seven-year-old for Halloween went as Rob Gronkowski. He went, out, he went as Rob Gronkowski. He got to the third house, hurt himself, was done for the year. I went, <laughs> he can mess me up, I think. I weigh 141 pounds. Um, <laughs> then I went looking for my kid the next day to see how he's doing. He was up in his room in his underwear, dancing, shotgun on the beer. He wants to be just like Gronk. But look, all kidding aside, when I heard Gronk was doing some stand-up tonight, I mean, I'm literally, I hope nobody told him to break a leg, because he'll fucking do it. And we need him. We want to win a Super Bowl this year, right? We need Gronk. We need him healthy. Yeah. What a time to be a Patriots fan, man. I'm telling you, you realize the Patriots have won Super Bowls XXXVI, XXXVIII, XXIX, XLIX, and LI. Does anybody else think that this Roman numeral shit isn't quite catching on? Right? After Super Bowl III, you lost me. I don't know what the hell's going on. You know how long it took me to memorize that? There's a reason no one else is using Roman numerals. They suck. It's a bad idea. Bad idea. You know where we should use... I got thinking about it. You know where we should use Roman numerals is on our passwords, on our bank accounts and stuff. Seriously, I don't think anybody can figure them out. You could literally put your date of birth on your password in a Roman numeral. Do you know what Justin, if I used a Roman numeral with my date of birth would be, if I used a Roman numeral? It'd be Justin XXIVILIXVIIXLIVIIXI. You make one of those lowercase, the Russians aren't hacking into that. Well, let me tell you. People that aren't from New England don't realize. I mean, it's, especially, it's a struggle being a Patriots fan, right? Especially if you're a Patriots dad, right? It's really expensive keeping up with the cost of all the championship gear, am I right? Right? Imagine being, imagine being a Dolphins dad. That dude hasn't bought a shirt since 1972. This 
got a lot of extra spending money, right? I mean, I got to buy all the gear every year. And, you know, then they, they would get all the jerseys and all the gear. And then this got me. We had an incident with my six-year-old on his Santa list. He wanted an Odell Beckham Jr. jersey. Yes. So I had to sit him down and tell him the truth about Santa. That he's a Patriots fan. I didn't really tell him there's no Santa yet, but it's coming. You know, when they get around nine or 10 is the time, right? It's getting close. And my oldest is nine now, and he's, he's getting suspicious. He's starting to ask me questions. Like, out of the blue, he asked me if the tooth fairy was gay. <laughs> Which completely shocked me, because a week early, he found out I was the tooth fairy. <laughs> like, oh, your mother would say he has some tendencies. Mannerisms, I think she calls them. <laughs> Got two kids. They're not Super Bowl babies, though. We all know what Super Bowl babies are. If you've seen the commercial the last couple of years during the Super Bowl, apparently nine months after the time of the Super Bowl, there's a rise in births. So the NFL put out this commercial, you know, showing, oh, these are all the babies born nine months after this year's Super Bowl. This is how old they are now. So the NFL's taking credit for this, like, mom and dad are watching the Super Bowl, they get horny, they go into the bedroom, have sex, nine months later, there's a baby. Okay, first of all, do you know what other event, what other day happens within a week of the Super Bowl every year? Valentine's Day, exactly. I think that's when married guys are getting laid. <laughs> Ladies, is there any day a man is less attractive than Super Bowl Sunday? Ooh, beer, breath, and buffalo farts. I gotta have that. I can't keep my hands on I love the way your belly sticks out under that replica jersey. Ooh. Ooh. You look just like Tom Brady. With your old deflated balls. Look, I'm just saying, if you're married, it's not happening on a Sunday, let alone a Super Bowl Sunday, right? I mean, let's be honest. I'm just saying, my, I have two kids. My first one was born in September. You know what's nine months before September? Christmas. My other one was born in February. You know what's nine months before February? June, my birthday. It was a Christmas present and a birthday present. <laughs> Happy Father's Day! And a lot of people are like, you know, I got two kids. People are like, do you, are you going to have more? No. <laughs> two is all I can afford. Right? I can't have more. Like, you wouldn't want a third one? No. Are you sure? I'm like, am I sure? Put it this way. My wife had her tubes tied. And I got a vasectomy. <laughs> and I wear a condom. <laughs> and I pull out. <laughs> and she's not even in the room half the time. <laughs> we can't take any chances. It's too expensive. <laughs> Buying all the championship gear. If we have three kids, we have to move to Cleveland and become a Browns fan or something. <laughs> no, we practice. I mean, we, we are being safe. We can't share. More people need to be safe. I think that's the problem in this country. Too many people having kids that shouldn't have kids. I'm very pro-contraception. A lot of people are against contraception. Look, I'm pro-contraception for one reason. I've met a lot of people that shouldn't be here, <laughs> right? You all know one person where one condom would have saved a lot of people a lot of headaches, am I right? <laughs> so I'm just saying, if you're not ready for kids, guys, if you're not ready, wear a condom, okay? If you don't want to wear a condom, just wear Crocs. <laughs> with socks. <laughs> Crocs with socks block cocks. Look, if you... <laughs> If you remember nothing else, that would be a good bumper sticker. <laughs> Look, that's why there's a rise in births nine months after Valentine's Day. Very few men wear Crocs in February. <laughs> and if you're gunny, you might as well wear it on Super Bowl Sunday, because it ain't happening anyway. Ah, oh, but being a Pats fan is great. And as big of a Pats fan as I am, 
My brother is even bigger than me. My brother has a Patriot logo tattoo on his arm. Yeah, that's a, right? Patriot logo tattoo, yeah. And I gotta tell you, I don't have any tattoos, but I did used to work in a jail for a little while, and I learned a lot about tattoos. <laughs> like, I saw a guy with these teardrop tattoos running down his face. He had like three drops on this side and two drops on this side. I didn't know what that meant. I thought that was a Jets fan tattoo. <laughs> But no, apparently, it has to do with, he, 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 some, it represents someone they've killed. Have you heard this? Each person they've killed. I didn't know. I saw it. I go, what's with all the teardrop tattoos? It's like, I've killed five people. <laughs> uh. Looks like you're being a baby about it. <laughs> I don't know if that's the look you're going for, but you might want to get rid of that if you're going to make it in here. You're doing like XLIV to life, aren't you? You got like a, <laughs> here for a while. I don't, uh, I don't have any tattoos, but if I ever got sentenced to prison, I would get a tattoo. I would get a lower back tattoo that says AIDS survivor. <laughs> right? So you guys are like, that's not a bad idea. That's not a tramp stamp, that's a no-go logo. <laughs> I'd get some teardrops running down my cheek. My cellmate would be like, I'm not going near that guy. I, I don't know what he's in here for. I think he's killing people with his ass. <laughs> hey, you guys are great. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Now that's a real comedian. Give it up one more time for Justin, everyone. All right. Up next, you've seen it on Comedy Central, on Conan O'Brien, which I've been on a few times, acting a little silly. Uh, but next up, we got Jay Larson. I was gonna go for a real stiff bro hug on Gronk, but I didn't want to put him on the IR, you know what I mean? <laughs> just... Some people are naturally built like this, you know what I mean? <laughs> Some people are just not as well in doubt. That's just... <laughs> By a round of applause, would you rather watch a Super Bowl on the sidelines of the Pats or sit in Bill Belichick's house while he watches Gronk on TMZ? I'm going TMZ. <laughs> My wife and I were driving the other day and a woman cut me off. I wasn't pleased. Switched into our lane, no directional. I was like, nope, not having that. <laughs> Gave her a little high beam flash, letting her know, hey, not exactly stoked with how you're driving. <laughs> then she stopped at a yellow light, which I was going to go through, right? <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'll just take her on the right. I swerve out, I'm like, you know what, no. Time to give a lesson. Stop at the yellow light, and I look over and I go. <laughs> you know, like a man. <laughs> and she looks back and she goes. And I was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> and I look over and I go, uh, you gotta use a directional when you're changing lanes. <laughs> like a substitute teacher. <laughs> and she looks back and goes, we just driving. We just driving. <laughs> we just driving. I don't know if that's a complete sentence, but I liked it. It's very zen, very prophetic, you know what I mean? We just driving. But I didn't want to lead on that I did, you know, and she had like a little dog on her lap, so I go, you got a dog on your lap. <laughs> and she looks back and sees my wife and she goes, you got a dog in the passenger seat. <laughs> yeah. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> now, I liked We Just Driving. I loved Dog in the Passenger Seat. <laughs> From a civilian? Are you kidding me? I remember looking over like, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. <laughs> but I still gotta look over at my wife and see how she's doing. I look over, she didn't even care. She looked at me like, yeah, yeah, say something back. Go ahead. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got this. And I look over at her and she's like, and the dog's like, 
I'm like, I don't think I got anything for these two. And I just grabbed the little lever next to the seat and I was like, if you got something, go for it, because I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait for green and then we're out, you know what I mean? She was a black woman. Black women have such confidence, you know what I mean? They say whatever they want. I was getting on an airplane and there was, I had a black stewardess and I go, hey, how are you? And she goes, I'm just hoping I win the lottery so I can quit this job, honey, how you doing? And I was like, amazing now, amazing now. Black women know themselves. You know what I mean? They just know who they are. A few years back, I'm at the Home Depot buying wood day before Father's Day. Black woman goes, have a happy Father's Day. And I go, oh, no, I don't, I don't have any kids. And she goes, yeah, I know, but you and your dad. I go, oh, no, my dad left when I was two. And she goes, and you'll be a better man for it. <laughs> I was like, what? You can't say that to somebody. But coming from her, it was like she hugged my soul. 27 years of therapy wrapped up in one interaction at the Home Depot. It's a beautiful thing. If that was a white woman, I'd be like, you have no idea what I've been through. I don't think anyone knows themselves. Who knows themselves? You don't even know who you are just walking through life. What's your favorite way to drink water? In a glass. In a glass. Look at this guy. No clue. You know what mine is? Out of a garden hose. <laughs> what? Am I stealing? Kinda. <laughs> Gotta let it run a little bit. Let it cool down, because it's coming underground. <laughs> People just walking through life, they don't know. What's your favorite way to get from one floor to another? Jump. Jumping? Are you Superman? <laughs> you jump flights? Nah, I got it. <laughs> and then you just land? <laughs> no one's ever said that to me, by the way. Just, just so you know. <laughs> Jumping. You want to take the elevator? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> What's your favorite way to get from one floor to another? Uh, stairs. Stairs. Basic. <laughs> Mine's a spiral staircase. What? You're like, who's up here? Is there a princess? What is this? Why are we doing this? Are there jewels up here? <laughs> Coming down sucks. You're like, that's too quick, that's too quick. Where's the railing? There's never a railing. It's like it's over here going down. <sighs> Gotta know who you are. Sometimes you, there are little checks so you don't even know. You're like, oh, that's who I am? I met an Asian guy with a British accent. <sighs> Try not to react to that. Go for it, yeah. I was like, hey, man. He's like, oh, hello. I was like, okay, all right, yeah? Of course. Why wouldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm Jay, good to meet you. <sighs> That's when you find out, you're like, oh, you're that guy. Here's an idea. This is how you can break people down. How many people who have ever sat in an exit row read the actual form they're supposed to read? Some people, who doesn't read it? Of course you don't. I would just jump. But what, what's your qualification? You don't need to read it. You wear plaid? What are you gonna do, guy? We're crashing, you're like, nah, I got it. What do you think? I read it the other day and it said, open the latch, grab the rope, and tie it to the hook on the wing to make a, 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 a railing for everyone else. I was like, are they out of their fuck? What? I'm in the seat for leg room, all of a sudden I'm building a handrail? I saw Sully, I didn't see anyone putting a rope, rope railing down. Out on the way, just hold on a sec guys. I'm gonna tie down this rope and make sure you're all okay. No, I'm good. Gotta know who you are. I recently found something out about myself I never knew. I get embarrassed when I go to a public restroom and I go to try the door and it's locked because I just think the person inside's like, <gasps> this guy needs the shit so bad. He's gonna jiggle the door. And I'm just like, no, I'm trying. Cause you gotta wait outside the door for them to come out. And they're like, oh yeah, it's free. And you're like, I just didn't know you were in there, man. <laughs> Showtime was gonna do a bio movie about Gronk and I got the part to play him. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that. 
Recently, I went to a restaurant for happy hour, and I was, I'm like, I'll take advantage of this. And I end up getting food poisoning <laughs> when I got home, and I called the restaurant. I'm like, hey, I just want to let you know I got food poisoning in case anyone else ate what I ate. And they go, oh, what'd you have? And I go, I had those ahi tuna tacos. And the guy was like, all right. And I go, and then I had those meatball sliders that you had. The guy goes, all right. And I go, and I had the tuna tartare, the, the little tuna tartare tower. And the guy goes, okay, yep. And I go, and I had that gorgonzola flatbread. You remember the gorgonzola? The guy goes, okay. And I go, and then I had those uh, custard donuts, the little custard donuts at the end. And the guy goes, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, who else was eating with you? And I was like, oh, no, it was, it was just me. And he was like, oh. And I was like, yeah, I think it was the tuna tacos maybe that got me. Knowing that he's on the other line, like, you don't think it's that you're a fat dump? <laughs> Sometimes you just find out who you are. There's not much you can do about it. <laughs> My wife found out who I was a couple Christmases ago. We live in Los Angeles. She goes, let's go for a walk on Christmas morning. I go, okay. We get down by the beach, and she's stretching, like getting loose. I'm like, what kind of walk are you looking to do? <laughs> and, you know, there's not many people out driving. All of a sudden, she pulls this stretch out, and I was like, okay, someone's about to get a Christmas gift, and it's that guy driving right there, and I just grabbed her, and I was like, oh, Merry Christmas, man, on the way by. And it took her a minute to be like, what the hell's going on? And then she's like, Jay, what are you doing? And I was like, it's Christmas, I'm just giving gifts. <laughs> this guy is like on his way to his in-laws and just sees some guy like this with his wife. And my wife goes, she's like, what are you doing? And she laughed, but she was like trying to act annoyed. And I'm like, listen, don't get annoyed. You know that's a thing in our house. Like if in my house, if I walk in the kitchen and she's trying to get something out of a drawer, I'm going to grab her and be like, hey, like just as a joke. And every time she'll go, come on, Jay, cut it out, cut it out. But she'll never move. Because secretly she loves this gag. She thinks it's hilarious. Maybe not in public. I just love the idea that that guy who was driving by to this day, like his buddies are like hanging out with him. He's like, hey, did I ever tell you about on Christmas that guy who was like, they're like, yeah, dude, we heard the story. He's like, I just think it's the guy with. <sighs> Where'd he go? Stair guy. That's something you'd probably pull. <laughs> Would you bring a jersey to get signed? Unbelievable. Of course, why don't you just jump to the ceiling and then come on stage? <laughs> All right, you guys, enjoy the rest of the show. I'm Jay Larson. Thank you so much. All right, guys, uh, we're going to uh, be in and out. Please, Grunk has a busy schedule. Let's keep this to football questions only, all right? Do not deviate from football questions. And remember the golden rule. Do not embarrass yourselves or your publication or me. Jay, get your damn hobbit feet off the podium. Thank you. Let's get this started. Uh, Rob? Ayo, hey, oh, hey, 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 uh, You, sir, in the front. Ayo, hey, Bobby Goons from Bada Bang Magazine. Uh, I got a keg and a couple of chicks in my pickup. You want to come and do some high school shit with me? Maybe? Next, please. Hey, oh, oh, uh, Jay. The wife and I, we've been thinking about maybe a threesome, and I don't know if that's something that you're open to. If if some we could, you know, start a dialogue. Or... Did you know what a threesome is? Yeah. A threesome is two chicks, one dude. If it's you and I and your wife, that's a double team. Yeah, that's okay. that's. Cool. So if you want a double teamer, then that's okay. I'm down with that, maybe. Okay. But she might not want you in it. Yeah, she probably. Once I get going, she's gonna be like, "Oh, I want Rob's yeah. flowing." Yeah. Th oh. Th th oh. Stick to football questions. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Grant. Yeah, you know, oh. Grant. You made the uh, cover of uh, Madden 17. Congratulations. Do you think, do you think it's appropriate for the uh, cover athlete to drop passes on fourth and goal? That's a video game, bro. Get a life. I had a life, all right? My kid beat me, Gronk. He's eight. I pressed triangle, Gronk. Cap. I did no my job. <laughs> Our next special guest we have here today, uh, the next comedian, you've seen him on Chelsea lately, John Capriluo. Fuck yeah. Uh, 
Good to be here. I, uh, it's my first time at, here um, in Foxborough. I, I grew up in Eastern Ohio. I was, a, I grew up a Browns fan. I, I stopped being a, 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 a Browns fan because I was mad because Belichick cut uh, Bernie Kosar. Um, <laughs> yeah, of all things, that was the last straw for me. I, I, <laughs> Not, not, not the drive or the fumble, not Red Right 88. It was, my, my starting quarterback doesn't look like fucking Big Bird anymore. So I know I'm pissed. I, uh, I tried to support the new Browns. Um, you know, they, they, I moved to LA in 99. That's when they came back in 99. I tried hard to support the new team I, and root for that team and rep that team. And then I realized one day, I don't have to. So, um, <laughs> I just decided I like football too much to let them ruin my fucking Sunday anymore, so, uh... I just can't do it. I mean, I, I, it's been tw almost 20 years. You're still rebuilding? I mean, really, like, how, how do you not get any better at all? I, I mean, you do, you guys do play football every week, right? I, I mean, what do you do at, at practice and at training camp and mini camps, play fucking bowling? I, I mean, <laughs> don't you learn how to catch, you bunch of dicks? I mean... I'm too, I'm too old for that shit. I can't uh, waste my time rooting for those fucking suckheads. I, uh, I'm 41 now. Um, getting old, fucking, it's, it's, uh, it's a weird thing, man. You know, it's not all at once. It's a nice gradual descent. <laughs> and you get those little hints along the way. You just have those little moments, you know. You're, as you look in the mirror, you start seeing gray hairs, gray eyebrows. Fucking pooped my pants in the car the other night. I, uh... <laughs> it was an accident. Uh, I was on my way to the grocery store. Um, it was an accident, as it usually is, I think, for most of us. I don't think anybody plans on shit in their pants, but, uh... <laughs> but it wasn't the fact that I pooped my pants that made me feel old. It was the fact that I still went shopping. Uh... <laughs> like, I just don't give a fuck anymore, do I? Whatever. <laughs> gonna buy milk and detergent, maybe offend the cashier, so what? Did you poop your pants? Nah, I farted in the car a while ago, it's no big deal, it won't hurt. <laughs> but yeah, man, it is, it, it is cool to be in uh, Foxborough. Like I said, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm a Patriots fan, I've been a Patriots fan for a while, I kind of have a slight man crush on uh, Tom Brady. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gay, I wouldn't kiss him on the lips. Uh, <laughs> but if Tom asked me to like slow dance or something, I'll give him a song. You know what I mean? <laughs> why would I pass that up? I don't know why Tom would ask me. I, I, mean, I guess <laughs> he'd have to lie, make a lot of mistakes between now and then to, uh, <laughs> to get to the point where he's like, I don't fucking know anymore. Did, Sir, do you want to dance? Or, It's happening <laughs> right here in Target. <laughs> Sir, did you poop your pants? Nah, I farted in the car. <laughs> I, uh, now, man, I, I just, I like watching great athletes just be great. It's fucking, you know, it's sweet. It's, um, you know, I love people, people just, you, you can tell with Tom Brady's got a fucking chip on his shoulder. You know, even as they're winning their fifth Super Bowl, you could tell he still was thinking about, they picked me 199th, motherfuckers. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm down 25 points in the biggest game of my life, but fucking Spurgeon win? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, I love that shit. I love people, it, it, just, you know, yeah, I know it's a game, but fuck everybody, you know, I mean. <laughs> I like that shit. That's, uh, you know, you don't just win, you win for petty spite. I like it. <laughs> I respect that. You know, I, like I said, I lived, in La I lived in Los Angeles for a while. Uh, like Kobe Bryant, I mean, a lot of people, you know, hated on Kobe. Even in LA, people were like, I don't like Kobe. He's a ball hog. Because he's good. <laughs> if I was that good, I'd never pass the ball either. Be a bunch of mad ass dudes on my team. Hey, I was open. Yeah, because you suck. All right? You're gonna. <laughs> You're gonna be open the whole goddamn game, all right? Just stand over there and be white, shut the fuck up, all right? I'm... I'm this guy. <laughs> I, um... No, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I just, I, I love, uh, I, I love watching the greats be great, but, um...
but it's yeah, it's cool to be here. I uh, I travel a lot for this job. Obviously, um, this is a fun trip. Uh, most trips uh, suck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, you know, travel does, it's, it's the drawback of this job. I mean, flying sucks, uh, hotel rooms suck. Why can't hotel rooms just have a fucking plunger? I mean, <laughs> is it really that cost effective not to where people fucking stealing them from you? I mean, do I, do I really have to make that call to the front desk? Uh, hi, <laughs> this is John Caparulo in room 226. I, uh, seem to have some standing water with my poop floating in it that, um, that I would really like for a stranger to come take a look at. Do you think you could send somebody? <laughs> and you know what they think? As soon as you ask for a plunger, you know what they think. Oh, somebody shitting fucking tree trunks up at 226. I guess not me. I don't shit that big. Nobody shits that big. What am I, a fucking camel? I didn't do it. They send a guy up. I got to make small talk with him. <laughs> Like he's somebody checking my fucking brakes or something. I'm like, hi. There it is. Uh, so I got it this far, but um, just can't get it to turn over. <laughs> um, I've never been a fan of uh, traveling. I. Um, you know, it, it is the, the one drawback, like I said, to this job. But, you know, I mean, other than that, it's pretty cool. I mean, it, it's a pretty cool way to make it through life, fucking laughing. <laughs> I always say, for me, comedy is better than sex because I'm kind of good at it. You know? <laughs> like, like, I might watch the tape of this, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but it's getting harder. Yeah, it's getting harder to leave home now. Uh, I'm a father now. Um, my, uh... Thanks. <laughs> Give it up for my loins. I appreciate it. I, <laughs> my wife and I, we have a daughter. Uh, her name is Madden J. Caparulo. My wife picked the name. I just signed off. <laughs> if it was up to me, it'd be like Madden 92. Caparulo, but this works. Everybody says she looked like me from the time she was born, which I thought that was kind of an easy assessment for a baby. I mean, don't all babies kind of look like me? You know what I mean? Like, I mean <laughs> She's short and chubby and pissed off most of the time. It's not that much of a stretch, really. But it, you know, it really is, uh, you know, it's, it's true what they say about, you know, I mean, with, with, with unconditional love, man. I love that little girl more every day. She's the only person in the world who could take a shit on me and we'd still hang out. You know, I mean, <laughs> any other relationship I have would probably be adversely affected by that, I would think. I mean, how come we don't hang out anymore? You pooped on my foot is why we don't hang out anymore. That was a mutual understanding. We wouldn't see each other after that. I mean, it's, uh, but you know, like, I mean, but you, know, you just worry as a parent. I mean, I'm already, you know, I worry about shit that I know I don't have to worry about yet with her. You know, I got a while, but it's like, once it's in my head, it's fucking, it's in there. You know, is it bad? I feel like there's gonna be a day, most likely, I guess, down the road when my daughter has to sit me down and break the bad news to me that she's heterosexual. <laughs> like, Dad, I'm sorry, but, I'm straight. <laughs> not in this house, you're not. I didn't raise you to be some boy toy hussy, goddammit. I raised you to play fucking softball. All right, that's what you're gonna do. I just can't imagine being okay with some horny teenage dude coming to swoop her up and just being, all right, have fun tonight, kids. Have fun with my daughter and your fucking penis, little bastard. <laughs> and remember, if you try to take her virginity, I'm gonna take yours, so. <laughs> Take a good look and decide whether it's worth it or not, because uh, <laughs> that's how much I love my little girl. <laughs> I'm willing to fuck her first boyfriend. All right, so you think about that tonight, Skippy. I wish that was a joke, too. I, 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 I put music on and shit, I make it extra fucking horrible. But, uh, but actually, you know, if you want to be a good parent, you got to be willing to make sacrifices. Sometimes that involves raping a kid. All right, you never know. You just never know. I know it sounds bad out of context, but you know, I mean, I don't just win. I win out of petty spite. All right, you see? I, I, I mean, and probably a few other mental disorders. All right, I gotta go. Thank you guys so much for letting me hang out. It's an honor. Thank you guys. All right, give it up for John one more time, everyone. Damn, they're short.
There we go. All right, the next comedian is uh, someone special to me. I met him seven years ago on a dating show. As you can tell, it didn't work out for either of us. <laughs> he's been on SNL, he's been on Showtime, and most importantly, he's been on the Grand Cruise, everyone. This is Finesse Mitchell. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know how my set gonna go, because I can look at the crowd and tell none of my people got the email. So, uh... <laughs> I'm serious. I got so fucking nervous. I called my boy. I had to import a black person just to make me feel... Ken A! I'm not like... That's my black friend right there. <laughs> and he from Rhode Island. He had to drive on here. I just... I love Grunk, man. I, that's good friend of mine. He's got a great heart. I, I invited myself over to his house today. I just wanted to see how rich he was. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just want to know. When I saw that damn house, you ever see a house that just make you feel like you ain't done shit with your life? That house was fucking humongous. I thought Samuel L. Jackson was going to come out with a picture of lemonade and say, who is that dressed all fancy, boss? I was like... Grunk so rich, he bought the house next to his house. And that house is just a gym for him. There are work, it's workout equipment in every room. I ain't got no joke for that. I just never seen that shit before. I just... <laughs> Craziness, man. It's so funny, before I came out here, Grunk was trying to give me comedy advice. Ha <laughs> ha! He was like, Finesse, bro, tell him you're from Atlanta and that you're like a Falcons fan. I'm like, you trying to take the comedy show to a lynching? What the fuck are you trying to do? <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And I just want to say this. I want to give a shout out to all the Patriots fans because, and let me tell you why. No, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why first. You guys are really classy. You are. Let me explain why. I am from Atlanta. I am a Falcons fan. I was at the Super Bowl. There was nothing but Patriots fans around me and my brother. I mean, it was just, it, they, we were so outnumbered in this football game, it was ridiculous. And for three quarters, we acted a complete ass. I mean, we show, I was standing on my chair. I was singing Negro spirituals. It was just the best football game ever. We was kicking the shit out of y'all. And then the fourth quarter happened. And here's, and here's where the classiness of the Patriots fans I was around comes in. You guys won the game, and then everybody turned and looked at me and was just like, <sighs> sorry, Finesse. That's, that's a tough loss. That's a, that's a tough loss, which made me humble, and I was just as respectful back. I was like, you know what? Thank you for the way you guys are handling this victory. And I apologize for all the times I told y'all to suck my dick for the first three quarters and that y'all wasn't shit. And I apologize, and I just want to say thank you for not making me feel any lower than I already feel. My brother was like, fuck that shit, punch him in the face. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> but I'm happy to be out here in Boston, Foxborough. get a break from the L.A. life. Yeah, sometimes you need to see new things and new white people, you know what I'm saying? Just <laughs> our white people all spray painted orange like the president, you know what I mean? But y'all that natural white. That's that natural, authentic color right here, y'all. Y'all don't give a fuck about tans, y'all just, like, this is us. Mm-hmm, I appreciate that. Bronk is my motherfucking dude, man. You know how many clubs we've been in and just, I had to stop hanging out with him. 
Every time we hang out, that shit be on TMZ. I'm like, fuck, man, I'm married. I'm the married dude with the earplugs in the back, like, mm-mm. Have you seen Gronk? That way, bitch, though, right over there. I'm gonna end my marriage. Fuck that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, uh, I, 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 and I'm, ha I'm, ha I'm happy, man. That single, that single life, it just... I'm over it now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm over it. I look older than I look, you know what I'm saying? That's because I'm black. Y'all know black don't crack. We age real good. But I remember being single. Oh, I don't... I remember catching a bad one. Fellas, you know how it is in the club. You go out, you have a good time, you see one, you're like, that's me right there. You go, you... You say your best lines, everything is working, and now it's time to leave. And you know how in the club, in the dark pretty, it's different from outside the club, in the light pretty? <laughs> I knew something was wrong, because we were walking through the parking lot, and then people was pointing and laughing, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> but I didn't get it. I thought they recognized me. That's finesse. No, nah, it was... I'm driving her home. That's when I saw what was going on. She's sitting on the passenger side, and every five seconds, the street lights are shining in, hitting her in the face. And I can see her better, so every five seconds, I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I think this is a man, ooh. But I wasn't sure. But I could hear my daddy, he was my granddad, and my dad was like, look, you ain't never sure. You better check their neck for the Adam's apple. So I'm trying to drive and look to see if I see something under her neck. But she kept her chin down, and I couldn't tell. <laughs> but then my spidey sense started tingling because she started playing with my radio, and that's when I saw her big ass She had like the biggest Shaquille old, like the biggest Gronkowski, she had like Shaquille Gronkowski hands all over my radio. And I'm like, this something ain't right, holy shit. Don't panic, Finesse, don't panic. You're not home yet, don't panic. And I didn't, but I got smart. I started blowing kisses at her and winking at her. And I purposefully let the car drift on the oncoming traffic on the other side of the road. And that's when she said, hey, 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 watch the road, man. You about to kill us. I was like, oh, you a dude. I knew it. I got to go. My name Finesse Mitchell, man. Thank y'all very much. Peace out. We're going to start with Carissa. Thank you. Rob, um, when are we going on that date? Uh, sorry, uh, I make out before going on dates. But we're already boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, that's what they all say. Lenny, please, let's keep it professional. Lenny Clark, Harvard Hard News. You know, I was driving in my car and it came to me. D do you manscape? Jesus. What? Yeah, not that I was focused on it, but I always see you without your shirt on. You have no hair. What are you, like, half dolphin? You know, I shave my junk, you know, because it makes me feel younger. What's wrong with you, Lenny? What? A lot of things. Thank you, Lenny. Uh, any more football questions? Hey, brother. What's up, bro? Do you need any help? No, I got this. I mean, I'm struggling, but I got this. All right, good. Well, Mom brought you an extra change of clothes. For real? Yeah, they're in the back. If you need any muscle putting them on, let me know. All right. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you guys for coming out. And that's it for Rob Gronkowski. Uh, and, uh... <laughs> Thanks for being professional. Shit. All right. We got one more special guest coming out. Uh, he's got a movie coming out soon called Stronger with Jake Gyllenhaal. Is that how you say that last name? Jake Gyllenhaal, right? He was telling me all about him in the back. Uh, but when I first met this guy, I'm telling you, he was fat as shit. <laughs> like, seven years ago. But now he's an inspiration to me and myself, too. This is Lenny Clark. A grunk, yeah! I'm proud of everyone, wow! Thank you so much, I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. When I started, you know, years ago when I started, I, I, I was a big fat bastard. I was 388 pounds with a size 56 inch waist, oh yeah. I was so fat, my wife started saying shit like, you can start fucking other people. Really? Yeah, go ahead. I don't give a shit. I get on an elevator. People look at me. They look at the weight capacity and back at me. I'll jump. I'll take this fucking thing down. Stop staring. <laughs> started working out with Gronk. Got a great trainer. My comrade started working. Everything started going. I can see my junk again. And I'm never letting it out of my sight again. 
There's my old pal. Oh, good God almighty. Yeah, you know, I mean, people, should, Gronk's should workout is tough. It's an amazingly tough workout because he's in great shape. Sometimes people say, well, you know, he's always getting hurt. You know, these guys are fucking gladiators. It's like getting hit by a truck every fucking play. You know, you work at Rite Aid. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, I can only imagine what it's like for somebody on the Patriots to get hurt and go talk to Belichick. Oh, coach, I, I sprained my wrist. You sprained your wrist? Oh, you sprained your fucking wrist, huh? <laughs> Gronk's played with a broken back. Menken's played an entire season with a broken leg. Brewski played with a hole in his fucking heart. Take that broken wrist, that twisted fucking wrist. Take that sprained wrist and go play for the fucking Jets. And so it's coach, coach, you know that's Tom Brady. Get back here, I'm not through fucking yelling at you. But Belichick, oh my God, he's fucking crazy, you know. We've been friends now for about 15 years, and I was in New York shooting rescue me, and he came into town, and he says, hey, Lenny, you want to go to dinner? I said, yeah, back then I was really fucking huge, like 388 pounds, so he says, uh, meet me at uh, Capitol Grill in an hour, you know? So I put on my cleanest pair of sweatpants I could find. <laughs> I take a cab down there, I meet him out front, we walk into the Capitol Grill, and you'd think the fucking Pope walk in there. Oh my God! Maitre D comes over, oh, Coach Belichick, we're so excited to have you. And he looks at me, and you, Coach Parcells, you know, nice to have you. I says, I'm not Parcells, you fucking bastard. Belichick thinks it's fucking hilarious, right? So they give us the best table in the place, right? Everyone's staring, they're pointing. It's Belichick. So the guy comes over with a $500 bottle of wine, pours Bill a glass. Said, you know, and Bill goes, hey, that's great wine. He said, and please accept it as, as our apologies. And he goes, fuck him, he's Parcells. Now, uh, oh, good God almighty. I tell you what, Gronk, Gronk is like, you know, people think, well, you know, he's not the bright guy. He's a genius. They said to him, Gronk, you're a big NFL star now. You can't drink a drive. He said, okay, fuck it, I'll give up driving. So, he buys a bus. He's got the Gronk bus. Do you know he got that bus from a church? Yeah, it used to drive little old ladies to church. Now it's driving hot young chicks to his house. He's got stripper poles. He goes, no, 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 those are roll bars, yeah. And what are the girls, fucking airbags, Gronk? Come on. Good God almighty. He's like a renaissance man, Gronk, he is. He wrestles. Did you see him wrestle on TV? Yeah. Pretty crazy, right? I wrestled in high school, but just until I came. And then... <laughs> Speaking of coming, OJ almost got his paroles cut off because eating cookies and jerking off. Did you see this on TV? Hey, yeah, they were gonna keep him in jail for eating cookies and jerking off. If eating cookies and jerking off was a crime, I'd be doing life. <laughs> I'm not condoning, but, but if they're putting in the Olympics, woohoo, I'm your guy. Good God Almighty. I tell you what, you know, being on Gronk is so crazy, you know, because Jesus, the things that this guy does, and, and, and I mean, I think he's a good role model. I do. I mean, you know, I know he's crazy, but he's good because he gets kids who want to play football. And kids, I mean, it, you know, kids, it's, it's kind of crazy. Because Gronk, I mean, I think about him, and, you know, people say, well, you know, he's dumb because he's big. They think he's dumb because he's big. Just because someone's big, you think he's dumb? If that would, logic were to hold true, then midgets would rule the world. <laughs> now, I love midgets. I do. I think they're adorable. They always look like they're in a hurry, you know? Uh, uh. <laughs> but you're not supposed to call them midgets. What are you supposed to call them? Little people, no, not small people, sir. They'll punch you right in the nuts, they will. <laughs> Little people, could mean the difference between a handshake or punching the balls, and I've had both. <laughs> well, midgets, you know, I mean, yeah, midgets, they don't give a shit if you call them midgets. The politically correct people. We had politically correct people when I was growing up. We used to call them nosy fucking busybodies. <laughs> midgets don't give a shit if you call them midgets. They've been midgets all their life. It's not like you're all drinking and going, oh, you fucking midget. What? I'm a midget. Ah! Get a high-powered rifle, climb in a towel. I'll get you, you tall prick. They don't care. Just don't rub their head. They fucking hate that. Now, 
But he's a good role model because he's got kids in, interested in playing football. And that's great. Because kids, man, I tell you, let me ask you a question. You seem like nice people. <laughs> Do you beat your kids? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Let me ask you, did your parents beat you? Yeah. Yes! They beat the shit out of you. And that's why you all turned all right. You know where your kids are now? They're home, going through your shit. <laughs> those little fucking angels, those little bastards that you do everything. $300 for sneakers. Are you out of your fucking mind? I want sneakers, $300. Steal them, you little fucker. Do something. <laughs> Don't get caught. Don't bring them by my fucking house. I say a size 12 if you're getting two. Look. <laughs> oh, my good God almighty. My parents used to beat the shit out of me. Oh, God, I was on the front porch one day. My father was kicking my ass. Cops pull up and said, hey, use this nightstick. You'll hurt your hand. <laughs> I come from a big family. Eight kids in my family. We all turned out. I'm the pick of the litter. You can imagine that fucking place at Christmas. <laughs> We're born and brought up in the housing projects. A lot of people call them condominiums now, but you're not going to bullshit me. <laughs> My mother and father, God love me, eight kids. We didn't have a TV, so if they weren't cooking, they were fucking. And one day my mother was cooking something on the stove. I went to touch it. She hit me with a cast iron pan. Bang! Knocked me out cold. I came to, she stands over me going, look what you made me do. <laughs> oh, jeez, my mother will never do that again, you know. Oh, my God, it was unbelievable what they did to me. But one day, you know, my father said, you know, you, you know, it's not working out. You, you got to get out. And I said, why? He said, well, you know, we need room for the other kids. And I was heartbroken, you know? And then he tried to tell me I was adopted, you know? I mean, he, he was a... <laughs> oh, God, yeah, it was unbelievable. You know, because as I got older and bigger, and my, I, my parents couldn't beat me as severely as I deserved, they saved up money and sent me to Catholic school to have it professionally done. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there's some Catholics in here, but you know, when I was a kid, everyone was Catholic. You met all oh, the Catholics. Yeah, they, oh, they were everywhere. Oh, yeah. Till that diddling priest scandal came, then everyone goes, oh, you a Catholic? No, no, I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. <laughs> and that didn't happen to me. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. That never happened. As a matter of fact, I have a lawsuit against the archdiocese because I wasn't molested as a child. <laughs> yeah, happened to all my friends, but not me. It made me feel unattractive. What about me, Father? Touch it, touch it, touch it! Touch it! You'll burn in hell. Do you think you're better parents than your parents were because you don't beat your kids, do you? No, you're pussies! You'd love to beat your kids, but you're afraid. You're afraid to call child protective services. You know what that was when I was growing up? That's where they sent you to get patched up for the next beating. Oh, yeah. I mean, how about this one? If you hit me, I'll call the cops. If I ever said that to my father, he'd go, really? Well, you better be able to dial the phone with your tongue. Because I'm going to rip your arms off and beat you with the wet fucking end of them. Now move out and get a job, you little prick. Hey, you people have been wonderful. Thank you so much. Great night being with you. Thank you. Dr. Gronk. Get out here, you big fucker. I know he's back there someplace. <laughs> I told you shit was getting crazy in the back. I just partied my damn pants off, baby. If you're ready to party, give me a hell yeah! Yeah, baby! And sorry for such a big piece. I was getting a hand job with lotion. Thank you. Ladies, it's real. And I got liquor cock, so I'll last a while. More than 20 seconds. 69 seconds tonight. But thank you guys all for coming out tonight. I hope you guys all had a great time. I had a blast. Thank you to all the other comedians. Sorry about my pants. Thank you all for coming out. Have a great night, all.